Merry meet everyone. This is Houston, um, and this morning I wanted to do a quick video um, showing you guys what I've been up to. Um, I know I haven't posted a lot. I think the last video I posted was a couple of days ago, or last week. It might have been a couple of days ago. Asking what I, what you guys want to see, and um, one person. There's two comments so far, and. Um, one said they like daily videos, so I think doing more of those would be kind of cool, showing what I've studied and what I've been doing and talking about personal experiences and stuff. And the other one I'm going to do in the next video, which I'll explain in the next video. But um, for me, oh, we'll start off with um, what I've been reading, or actually no, that'll be last because I'll explain more. Um, actually, I got really crafty last night, and I made... These two guys, which I don't know if you can see them, we'll zoom in on them. These two guys, um, they're, um, I, got, I call them spirit prayer beads. Um, they are connected to a particular um, spirit friend. I call them spirit friend or spirit guide of mine. Um, the first one, I'm not going to say who because that's personal, but um, this one is more of a, kind of helps me connect to my both of them help me connect to more of my shamanic um, aspects, but this one goes, this one right here, goes into connecting with the three worlds, where this part represents the lower world, this part the middle world, and this part the upper world with the beads I chose. This one, on the other hand, helps me connect with um, the water element and um, water attributes in shamanism. Um, going along with working with the ancestors, psychic development, uh, divination, um, gaining insight, and healing. Um, so yeah, I made these guys last night. I had a lot of fun. I think I'm going to make a couple more. I um, thought they'd be a lot harder than they were, but actually no, I have a, a great teacher who taught me, and she's one of my really, really good friends, and, and I thank her for teaching me that, because I can make a lot of these guys in the future. Now, um, on to what I've been reading. I'm the type of person, or I guess you say the type of witch that has like, um, who starts a book, um, and then starts another book halfway through that first book, and has like, then ends up to having like 15 books started, but halfway through, and then goes back to them throughout their, their reading. So right now I have four books that I'm currently reading at this time. You know, get bored with one, you read something else, you know, just look at the information so you can. Um, the first one, which I absolutely love is, um, oops, excuse me, is The 21 Lessons of Merlin, A Study in Druidic, Druid Magic and Lore by Douglas Munro. I love this book. Um, it actually goes into kind of like the teachings of Merlin and um, Arthur, and it actually um, has old Welsh spells and incantations, and it's it, like each... Each chapter of the story has a lesson it teaches the reader. Um, so it goes through of like the spell of making, how they cast a circle, what their sacred, what in the book, what the Merlin's sacred tools were, which is like the four elements he has, which is for Earth he has the stone, and it represents the the legendary wep weapons or tools of the Tawatha Dindanan. I think I believe that's I'm I'm saying that right. Um, the stone for Earth, a um, Oyster chalice, oyster with silver chalice for water, a golden sickle um, with a, a ruby, or just a golden sickle for, um, or a golden um, bowline for um, fire, and a, a wand of art for, a wand of art or a wand of knowledge for air. Um, and I think it's really cool. It goes through that. It goes through working with the Ogum, um, working with song. Um, I think it has a, it has actually, I'm in the chapter where it's called Song Spells. Um, and it actually talks about and actually shows you different um, songs. It lays out in sheet music where you can play it on a whistle, a flute, a piano, or whatever for each of the Sabbaths. Which I find extremely awesome because I love playing my little whistle, that or my little um, flute that I got. I love it. Um... The next book that goes along kind of with that teaching is, let's see, Ancient Magics for a New Age, Rituals from the Merlin Temple, The Magic of the Dragon King by Alan Richardson and Geoff Hughes. Um, this doesn't really go into druidic magic. It goes more into ceremonial magic. Um, it's 
the beginning introduction is like 103 pages. It talks about the um, making of the Golden Dawn, um, or the Order of the Golden Dawn, if I'm saying that right. It goes into different aspects and who were the main figureheads and all that jazz. And then in the next two parts, it goes into a diary. Um, one part's a diary from a woman who practiced in that... Um, in the Golden Dawn, and what she did, she they um, work with the archetype of Merlin, um, and he teaches them through um, kind of meditation and astral travel, the different magics of high ceremonial magics, I guess you could say. I'm rambling, but it goes into one woman who was in the 18, 1880s, I believe it talks about her practice and what she feels and what she experiences in her magic, and the next section is a guy in the 19... 80s or 1970s um, doing the same thing um, almost the same thing it was different like it goes into what they feel and what they experience and what they see which I find really interesting I love um, I love hearing about uh, stories of people who practice magic and what they experience in their magic because everyone's different you're not going to experience the same thing that someone else does even if you're doing the same ritual um, and I found I find that really interesting um, so yeah, and then the, the last section of the book talks about how to incorporate the rituals of the Merlin Temple, the magic of the Dragon Kings, into your practice, like different um, rituals you can do, different meditations, um, incantations, I believe, and things along that nature. It's a great book. I found this um, at a used bookstore called Here Be Books in Charleston um, a long time ago. A long time ago. This guy, I bought off Amazon. I forgot to say that. I bought, found this guy on Amazon, and I think I paid a penny and like three ninety nine shipping, so four bucks altogether. I love used books. Um, the next book I've been reading is by DJ Conley. It's by Oak, Ash, and Thorn, a modern Celtic shamanism. Um, I'm finding a lot of connections between um, the... I think I posted this on my Facebook page, if you guys are follow me on my Facebook page, but I found a lot of similarities between modern Celtic shamanism, or Celtic shamanism in general, and the Druidic teachings. Um, in this book, the beginning of it is, I have to say, from my personal opinion, it's a really, really, really dry read. Um, you have to, you know, you have to be in the sense to actually sit down and read it. Um, the beginning of it was super, super, super dry, but once it gets on to, and the, um, the journeying process, DJ Conway actually starts talking about her experiences, which kind of perks up my attitude about reading the book, because like I said earlier, that's what I love to hear, is um, personal experiences throughout the craft. And my incense just went out. Damn it. Whatever. Um, and the next book I've been reading, which is great, is... Um, whoop, whoop. Hold on. Great. All right, sorry about that. My phone fell. Um, the books are about to fall on my phone fell. One or the other. Uh, the next book I have is Corrine Kerner's Complete Guide. It's a simple fortune telling with tarot cards. And this book, I love reading tarot and I love learning more about the tarot. Um, it goes into the spreads. It goes in to the card definitions like regular tarot books do, but it also goes in with the st what she believes the um, correlation between each card. Like, um, if you got the Fool and the, you know, Three of Cup or Three of Swords together, you know, it tells you the relationship, what she believes it is, but she also says follow your intuition. What's in the book is what she believes, and it also, you know, and she just letting you know to follow your intuition. It's not a dead set way to read the cards. Um, but this is kind of, you don't, this kind of book says you don't have to be psychic to read the tarot cards, which I believe you don't have to be. You don't have to be psychic to um, read the cards because they're systematic almost. They're laid out in a certain way and they're created a certain way where people who want to read them can read them with study and practice. It takes a long time. I mean, I've been studying tarot for the five almost five years, and I'm not anywhere near close to saying that I know everything about tarot. I don't ever think I ever will be, because there's always something new to learn with tarot and with magic. Um, trying to think. Other than that, it's pretty good. Um, life is good. Um, just relaxing outside on a great day. I think that is it, if I don't think I have anything new coming in. No. 
Yeah, so they, like I said, that's it. I hope you guys have an awesome day, and um, talk to you guys next time. Blessed be.